Um, I uh, really thought that the first 10 points of the match was a battle. Um, both teams just were trading punches the entire way through. Um, I looked down and, and North Florida was hitting high 300s, but we were hitting mid 400s. And I don't think either team was playing the defense that they really needed to be playing. Um, North Florida's offense is very similar to Florida Atlantic. They set the ball very high and we run very fast. And so it's two completely different offenses for the other to practice against in their own gym. And I think you saw as the game went on, both teams tried to adjust to the speed of the other's game a little bit more. I thought we did a pretty nice job of that um, and, and were able to take some things away from them, but they didn't quit. I mean, we really, we had to go out there and we had to play. Um, and, uh, you know, minus, minus a few errors, it's, it's a lot like the Florida Atlantic match. There's a few too many errors in that first set. Um, maybe it wouldn't have been so close in that first set, but man, they play with a lot of heart and a lot of fire. And, and um, we really had to bring it at them um, to see if we could break them. Now, I don't think we broke them by any means. Um, maybe just wore them down for the day, but I'm sure that we're going to have the best of them again tomorrow. McKenna said the team showed more power tonight than get than against Florida Atlantic. You saw that? Yeah, I think we're becoming less tentative. Um, we're we're going up and we're we're taking more courageous shots, um, and it's not so much more riskier things, but it's just we're going up there with conviction, and it's not. I'm afraid to make an error. It's like, I am going to get a kill on this or the ball's going to bounce somewhere and they're going to dig it or it's going to come back over or it might get blocked, but we're not afraid to be blocked. And that's, I think that's really key for all of our hitters is not being afraid to be blocked. And so the back court has to help out because when a ball's blocked, we have to pick that ball back up. thought we did a pretty good job of that for the most part. I mean, they only had five blocks out of a hundred swings. So um, that's that's not a bad a bad job on our part. Okay, so um, you guys, okay, so over the course of the game, you and Apple's kind of starting to figure your figure you guys out. Um, how are you planning on switching it up for tomorrow? You know, I think we have probably about four or five different ways we can run our offense. Um, I think they looked at the videotape of the Florida Atlantic match and saw us setting our right sides a lot. I think you saw tonight us setting our left sides. Um, there's a lot of different ways we can do this, different patterns that we can do. We tested some things out that we did not use against Florida Atlantic, um, some substitution work, um, some different serving things, you know, and we're going to just keep testing things. We're still trying to learn ourselves. So, I mean, all you can do at this point of the year is just react to what they give you. Yeah, they're going to line up a certain way. We're going to take a look at that, and then we're going to kind of build our game plan offensively on the fly. But um, Jenny's done such a great job of game planning all year long. Um, we hit tremendously in, in both matches against Florida Atlantic, and again tonight hitting 357. So, you know, we'll we'll just take a look at what they give us and and. Um, do our best to, to take what they give us. In the meantime, we've just got to continue to do a better job of, 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 of getting in the way of their hitters because they're so strong and powerful. And then we have to be a little bit better in, in our discipline and our eye sequencing on the tips. Um, a team can't tip and, and beat you. Um, they can frustrate you though. And then you start guessing. You know, and I, If we just stay poised, play our position on the floor, sequence right, we can see the tip coming, release, pick up the tip and transition will be fine. It's if we get too scattered or we get, you know, we're, we're a half second behind in our minds, that's where things like that can happen. You've mentioned in the past that you're not nowhere near close to where you want to be, not even close to midseason. As in a unique season like this, as you judge each match, what are some of the things you'll look for to see if you're making progress like you would like, or maybe not making the progress you would like and want to address it? What are some of the things you'll look at? Well, I, you know, I think you look at um, little things that don't show up on a stat sheet. You look like your, you look at your passing percentage. Um, you look at your side out percentage, your point scoring percentage. There's, there's a bunch of different things that, that we look at on the computer after we break down film, we look, you know, we grade it a little bit and, and, and look for just steadiness or even improvement. Um, and I think we're getting some of that. You know, we, 
we did some things in the in the back row passing wise, maybe to give us a little bit stronger of a pass, but we give us some things in attacking when we do that. Uh, but we were attacking well enough, we felt like we could give up some of those things in the backcourt. So I think we got some things defensively that we liked, but we had to give up some offensive things to get it. Um, so it's a, it's a give and take. Um, and we're going to learn against which team we're going to do, what thing, um, what kind of teams, some things will work and some things won't work. Um, but tomorrow, I mean, it's just, it's about going to watch the film and just seeing it's a game of inches, really. The, the difference between the first set and the last two we're just an inch here or there, just moving your feet a little bit more, getting your hands in the right spot, holding, waiting a little bit longer. I mean, there's just little things that uh, I was really proud of how our team adjusted on the fly. Just a couple of matches into the season, you and the players said, still working to find the chemistry within the team. Did you see some progress on that and as well in the communication between the players during the matches? Yeah, I, I think we continue to grow a lot on the court. Uh, it's very tough to do in the practice setting because we hadn't been playing any kind of a starting lineup together in practice because we're still competing for spots, to be honest. I mean, there's, there's still competition going on to be the starter. And so we're still mixing things up. So it's going to be difficult to get that rhythm of just eight or an eight or nine player rotation when you're mixing through 14, 15 players. Um, and so we're going to get some of that during the preseason matches. But eventually we're going to settle on an eight or nine. They're going to be our primary players. Um, but we're not there yet. There's still a competition going on. There's there's still spots up for grab. Um, these were just the players we went with tonight. And it was uh, successful. So you guys were the preseason favorites and McKenna, another preseason favorite. Um, have you felt the pressure of it yet? Or, or are we still too early to, to no, feel that? No, and um, I... I, I forgot that that was the case until you just brought it up. Um, the, the polls really don't mean anything to us. Rather, it's preseason coaches' polls or uh, top 25 polls or recruit rankings. Or, you know, we'll go out and we're UCF. We go out and we're going to do what we're going to do, despite what anybody thinks of us. Um, we're not out there for anybody's approval. We're out there to be, um, you know, be the best we can be. And we want our own approval. That's what we play for. So, you know, that, that, that's great that the coaches thought that of us. I think it's a bit of a jinx because I'm not sure that the team that's been selected to win the conference has ever won the conference. Um, but, um, you know, certainly McKenna deserves to be recognized as one of the top players in the league, but there's a lot of great players in the league. And, you know, we've said this from the beginning, we don't really care what the preseason awards are. We're more interested in awards after the season. Those are the ones that, uh, that you remember and you hang on shelves and you know going to your trophy case. Um, so all the preseason stuff is nothing but uh, stuff for you guys to pontificate on and write about, and uh, we're fine with it. Give me your thoughts on Ariana. Obviously, local kid back here in, in Central Florida, contributing to the win here. A couple matches in being around her. What the impact that she had on this match and will have on your team the rest of the way? Yeah, she's still um, growing and learning. Um, it's a different system probably than she played um before and um it's simpler in some ways and it's more difficult in some ways and, and we don't have two hours for me to tell you how but she's still learning it, it's a it's a process for her to um you know learn and understand what we're trying to do where to be how to read be disciplined um but where what she's doing a really nice job of is in her serving game runs of points with her serve and in her passing game, she's keeping us in system. And that's that's really what you want from a libero. I mean, that's if you if you look up to the lineage of liberos, we've had liberos that have kept us in system and able to run our offense. And she's doing a fantastic job of that. Uh, all those digs are just a bonus right now.